Hello brothers and sisters, welcome to this video. It is Wednesday the 30th of September, 5 p.m. UK time. So I'm going to cover the astronomy of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is coming up this weekend. It is a very interesting period of time and the things that are going on in the heavens I wanted to update you with and I think you need to know about. It's time to start watching Mars. This was on September the 8th. You may have noticed that Mars has gotten brighter and brighter in our sky. It says in this article, if you missed Mars last weekend near the moon, don't worry. Mars is very bright and very red now. You can't miss it in the night sky. And by October, it will outshine Jupiter. Start watching it now and enjoy the fun. In the year 2018, Mars was brighter than all the stars. You'll recall that there was a dust storm on Mars and I said that potentially Mars is the dragon which uh, we should watch out for. It says it was even brighter than the second planet Jupiter. It was a blazing red dot of flame in our sky for several months. And then in 2019 Mars was mostly faint. It was barely noticeable in our sky. And now Mars is bright again, brighter than all the stars. It's not as bright as Jupiter yet but it soon will be for a, m a month surrounding mid-October 2020. So Mars is coming up and it is becoming brighter and brighter and as you may have seen there is war which is coming with Azerbaijan and Armenia. Mars is the planet of war. So September 2020 is a wonderful time to start watching Mars. It's rising in the east now not long after the sun goes down and you can't fail to recognize Mars. It's very bright and it's very red in color so this is Mars coming up um, I uh, su suggested that Mars may be the red dragon uh, which is interesting because the first conjunction that happened after the Revelation chapter 12 sign was between Mars and Venus and this conjunction occurred on the Feast of Tabernacles as I will show you so it's almost like it was a, a pointer saying watch out for this Mars and Venus and where they will be located on the Feast of Tabernacles. So here we are in 7 BC and we are going to see the triple conjunction that occurred between Jupiter and Saturn. This was a warning to the Magi that the birth of Christ was about to take place and they would have been fascinated with what was occurring here. So I'm going to show you this and where it occurred and I want you to remember exactly what you see here and where this took place over the band of the fish which is going backwards which is the representation of Israel which the, the representation of the church is the fish going upwards so what could be a better picture than this of the rapture in the skies one fish going up and the other fish going backwards okay so watch this conjunction here we can see I have put on uh, object path trackers and you will see that the conjunction happened right over the band of the fish which was going backwards and then was the second conjunction and then the third conjunction and off it went. So that was the great major conjunction which occurs once every 20 years between Jupiter and Saturn and this was recorded by the astronomers. This is this is probably one of the most famous conjunctions that occurred in history and it occurred in Pisces three years before the birth of the Messiah. Okay, now we are in uh, 3 BC, September 11th and you see that Jupiter is over the King Star Regulus and this was a triple conjunction over the King Star Regulus. This would have given the heads up to the Magi that the Messiah had been born. It was the king planet Jupiter or Tzedek righteousness in the Hebrew and over the king star Regulus which is the, the king star in Leo the regal star so here we will see the triple conjunction Jupiter conjuncts and then it goes backwards and there you have your triple conjunction okay then as it comes forward you can see that Jupiter and Venus conjunct right there and many people say that that was the star of Bethlehem that the Magi saw above. All right, so here we are at the famous Revelation chapter 12 sign. Everybody will remember this, this beautiful sign. And we had Jupiter, which was in the womb of Virgo for nine months. It was in retrograde there 
for nine months and then it came out um, and this was the Revelation chapter 12 sign. This happened, of course, on just after Rosh Hashanah. It was on Nisan the 3rd of 2017. But then if we went forward, we went to the Feast of Tabernacles. And on the Feast of Tabernacles, which was the 4th and the 5th, we had a Mars and Venus conjunction. So this was the first conjunction which happened after the Revelation chapter 12 sign, which I thought may have been the dragon. Um, I have an idea that Mars could be the dragon, and uh, that remains to be seen. But nevertheless, this was the first conjunction which happened after the Revelation chapter 12 sign. It happened on the Feast of Tabernacles 2017. So now going forwards three years, we are coming up to Tabernacles and Venus is conjuncting with the king star Regulus, Leo. And uh, this is quite an interesting conjunction. I'm going to read an article regarding this, which is coming up. The astronomy websites have articles about this, which we will go through in a second. But this isn't the only thing which is happening on the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is coming up this weekend, guys. Uh, we can see that Mars is in the very place that the triple major conjunction that occurred between Saturn and Jupiter occurred and it is also in retrograde motion so what I'll do is I'll just go back slightly and I'll show you that Mars has been in retrograde motion okay so we're going to go forwards from July of this year middle of July and here you can see Mars going forwards until August and it comes up to September and right where the deal is announced on the 15th of September it starts to go into retrograde motion and it starts to go backwards and here we can see not only is Mars coming back into retrograde motion but as it traverses the band of the fish which is going backwards here comes the full moon which is known as the harvest moon this is the harvest moon which is coming up and right as the harvest moon comes up you'll see that it almost conjuncts with Mars and as it crosses the band of the fish going backwards Mars then crosses it going into retrograde motion so they're going into opposite motion and also the fact that this is happening right at the time that Venus is conjuncting with Regulus is pretty incredible so I'm going to go through a couple of articles but uh, just so that you know, guys, this is the full moon right in between the band of the fish, which is going upwards and backwards. This is happening at a very, very interesting period of time. Harvest moon dazzles. Hits Mars, then reveals shooting stars. What to see in the night sky. So we will see that uh, September 28th to October the 5th, this is over the Feast of Tabernacles this week sees the rise of the harvest moon guaranteed to be a spectacular sight before our natural satellite moves super close to Mars. Then also it's the peak of the Draconids meteor shower uh, and we know that the dragon is that's the sign that we're waiting for so perhaps it's a combination of the Draconids and Mars one of the easiest of the year to see given relatively warm evenings it's also uniquely convenient and it's the only display of shooting stars of the year to look its best right after suns sunset so we see the full harvest moon which is going to take place and we see the conjunction of the moon and mars which is occurring in pisces right between the band of the fish going upwards and the band of the fish going backwards and this is said in ew bullinger's witness of the stars it says he says on page 78, the fish shooting upwards to the polar star exquisitely pictures this heavenly calling, while the other fish keeping on the horizontal line answers to those who were content with an earthly portion. So the rapture of the church depicted by the fish going upwards and uh, those who are left behind depicted, which is ultimately Israel, by the fish going backwards along the ecliptic. And in this article, we can see spectacular Venus Regulus conjunction in early October. Brilliant Venus 
in and of itself is worth getting up for, but the tantalizing close encounter of Venus with the bright star Regulus won't happen again for another eight years. Start watching them now. And there you can see Regulus, Venus, October the 2nd to October the 3rd. It goes across uh, Regulus, and that is right on the Feast of Tabernacles. So when we see these interesting things happening in the skies, and they are conjuncting with the feast days of the Lord, we should sit up and take notice. Depending on where you live worldwide, the planet Venus and bright star Regulus, heart of the line in the constellation Leo, will sweep closest together on our night sky's dome on the morning of, Sep of October the 2nd or the 3rd. But don't wait until then to see them together. Okay, I'm going to skip forward. I'll put the article in the description of the video. But this is what's very interesting. The actual conjunction of the planet and stars when the two meet in the night's right ascension on our sky's dome will fall on October the 3rd at midnight. So that is midnight UTC, which is universal time that that occurs. So have a look and check that out. 2020 harvest moon in early October. Harvest moon in 2020 coming up October the 1st. For the first to the second for the northern hemisphere. What's more, this harvest moon will be near fiery red Mars. Wow. So guys, uh, I just wanted to show you that astronomical stuff. I think it's very interesting that uh, Venus is sitting over the King Star Regulus on the Feast of Tabernacles, and Mars has formed this triple conjunction with uh, the band of the fish, which is going backwards, and that is a picture of Israel, the earthly calling and uh, the fish which is going horizontal. Is this a picture of the rapture of the church which is taking place? We shall see. There's the moon right there uh, at its maximum. It's a full moon and it is right next to Mars. So keep looking up. Some scriptures concerning tabernacles. Deuteronomy 16.16 16, Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles. So we've seen in the feast of unleavened bread, which is the first of those, that's Passover, the typology, the death, the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the second, the Feast of Weeks, that is Pentecost, we saw that the Holy Spirit was given. And the third, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, as far as I can think, is an unfulfilled type. So perhaps the Feast of Tabernacles is going to be the rapture of the church. And this is backed up with uh, 2 Corinthians 5.4. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. And uh, in Corinthians, it tells us that death shall be swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And in 2 Peter 1.13, it says, Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath shown me. And then in Matthew 17, 4, uh, Peter says this to Jesus when they see the Lord Jesus Christ transfigured with Moses and Elijah. Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. That's interesting. Three tabernacles. This uh, tabernacles that we are seeing right now is the third tabernacle from the Revelation chapter 12 sign. One for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. And are those the two witnesses? We shall find out very shortly. So, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. I love you very much, and I will see you in the sky.